During the last lecture, I went over how to take three forces and resolve them into one force using the parallelogram rule. During this particular lecture, we're going to look instead at doing the same thing, resolving three forces into one, combining them, but we're going to use the method of components. So in this case, you can see we started with the exact same diagram. And as before, um, I need to begin with a working diagram. Our working diagram is very simple. It looks very much like the original diagram with the exception of some additional things. First of all, don't forget a sign convention. Every problem needs a sign convention de determining and defining which way is positive x and positive y. You also need to label all forces and angles. So you can see I've labeled f1, f2, and f3 here. And I've labeled this angle right here, the 45 degree angle, as beta. I like to try to keep the Greek letters associated with their um, numbers. So for example, beta is the second letter in the Greek alphabet, hence I put it with F2. That just keeps me from making silly mistakes. Now at this point, you can kind of do things in whatever way you wanted. I went ahead and started with F2. So um, we'll proceed like this. Solving for F2x. and F2y. So then we would say on the cosine of beta, well, F2x equals the cosine of beta times F2. Beta is 45 degrees times F2, which is 450 newtons. So F2x equals 318.198 newtons. Now, that is not a complete answer as of yet. F2x equals 318.198 newtons. It needs a sign indicating which direction it's going. Now, you can write a vector symbol like this, showing that it's going to the left, or you can write a negative sign. Either of those are valid, and either of them are exceptional, uh, acceptable. However, you may never write both the vector symbol and the negative sign. You ask, why not? Well, first of all, that's confusing to have both the vector symbol and the negative sign because they both indicate the same thing. And second of all, in this case, it's actually technically wrong because as you'll recall, negative means the opposite. And so in this case, to have a negative sign along with the vector going to the left, well, that would mean the opposite of this, which would be saying that it's going to the right, which of course it is not. Next, we're going to solve for F2y. And this goes under the same heading. Now, since beta is 45 degrees, I realize that F2x and F2y are going to be exactly the same value. You may not, however, say that they're both the same thing. First of all, that's bad practice. And second of all, it's not technically correct because although F2x is a negative 318 newtons, F2y is a positive. 318 newtons. I'm sort of cheating here by moving the diagram around a little bit. You wouldn't, of course, be able to do this on your paper, but I'm going to go ahead and leave the diagram up there as number one just so you can see a little bit more closely what's going on. So next is uh, Roman numeral number three. And I'm going to go ahead and resolve. Uh, F3. Now 
Now you might wonder what why I'm doing this before I'm doing F1. I'm going to leave F1 until the end uh, just because there's something specific I want to show you. If we look at our little uh, this the slope triangle on F3, we can see that um, we have a 3, 4, 5 slope triangle and the 3 corresponds to x. So F3x, all I'm doing is using a ratio here, is 3 fifths of F3. Uh, correspondingly we could say that F3x divided by F3 equals 3 divided by 5. So that's 3 fifths of 600 newtons, which means that F3x equals a positive 360. Likewise, we're going to take F3y and say that F3y, if we look back at our slope triangle, 4 is equivalent to the y side and 5 is equivalent to F3. So it'd be 4 over 5 times F3. So F3y is 480 newtons. Positive. Now as before, you could either use the positive sign or you could use a vector symbol. If you wanted to use a vector symbol, you would draw it going up like this. However, that is incorrect to have both the vector symbol and the sign, even in the case that it's positive. So next is step four. Solving for F1y. Now of course you can probably see that F1x is zero. You can probably also see that F1y equals 300 newtons because it's along the y-axis, but there is a specific way that you have to state that. You have to state that F1y equals F1. And that statement there is required. So then the next step would just be to say that F1 equals a positive 300 newtons. Underline it three times and you're done. So now we'll move to step five. Solving for FRX and FRY. So FRX, I'm calling FRX the resultant x vector equals plus or minus F1x plus or minus F2x plus or minus F3x. Whenever you have a statement like this, it, it would be a good idea to stop and take a look at the vectors you have and make sure that all of those actually have components. For example, F1, the x component for F1 is 0. So we just cross that out and write a 0, just like that. On the next step then, we write algebraically what FRx is. So FRx equals F2x is a negative, F3x is a positive. So there's my equation solved for variables. Now I'll need to plug my numbers in. F2x was a negative 318.198. F3x was a positive 360.000. And that leaves me with an answer of FRx equals a positive 41.8020. So now we'll move to FRY. And just like before, it's plus or minus F1Y, plus or minus F2Y, plus or minus F3Y. 
So f r y equals. All of those have actual components. It'd be f one y plus f two y plus f three y. So f r y then equals f one y was three hundred newtons. F2y was 318.198. And then F3y was 480. And we find that FRy equals a positive 1098.20. Then we underline that three times. And we write in our answer box over here, somewhere off to the side. FRx equals a positive 41.80 newtons. FRy equals a positive 10.98 Newtons. And if you compare those answers to the previous problem, they are the same if you use Pythagorean's theorem to solve for the resultant vector. There you have uh, using the method of components to break each vector, uh, to resolve the vectors into single resultant x and y components. This method is many times easier and faster than using the parallelogram rule.